Okay, so hi everybody. Uh, welcome uh, uh, to the class of today. Uh, today we have uh, our third uh, lecture on software defined networks. Uh, and today the lecture is uh, about uh, a well known uh, uh, SDN protocol, maybe the king of the SDN protocols, uh, as it is the most uh, famous one. Uh, and, and this is the OpenFlow uh, protocol. Um, how many of you have heard the OpenFlow before? A couple of uh, half hands. Oh, nobody? Okay, fantastic. I think you are laughing. I think you have heard of OpenFlow, right? <laughs> okay. Um, fantastic, that's great. Um, Okay, at the end of the lecture today, uh, we will all be uh, very well uh, aware of uh, OpenFlow, of um, what um, this uh, uh, OpenFlow means, um, and uh, why it is useful, um, and uh, a bunch of uh, details uh, of how it works. So what is the agenda for today? Uh, the agenda is, first of all, um, we will start with some brief, uh, some real basics uh, about OpenFlow, uh, what it is, uh, and, and some fundamental concepts. Um, then, um, after um, we go past the very basics, um, we will work together uh, an example uh, of how a, a packet is handled in an OpenFlow network. Um, uh, in this example, you will see various things. First of all, you will see that uh, packets do, are not handled anymore as in traditional networks. We have some differences um, in the way we handle packets. Uh, and also, and perhaps more importantly, in this example, we will see uh, which are the basic OpenFlow messages. Okay, OpenFlow is a protocol. Protocols have messages, message types, and we will see the basic open flow message types uh, and what we need to know about them. Okay, so this is the second major milestone of the lecture um, today. Um, and then we will do something new. Um, those of you who took computer networks with me last uh, um, uh, spring know what peer instruction is. Um, uh, so raise your hand if you know what peer instruction is, and uh, so it's, it's a small sample. I'll just uh, do nobody else. I mean, I think I have more familiar faces. So peer instruction, maybe you know what it is, but you don't, don't remember the name. It's basically the process I was doing in uh, computer networks that I was handing out some questions to discuss uh, during the, the course. So this is a different uh, and interesting, very interesting approach of teaching. Um, I, I'm not going to go into all the details now. We will leave it for later um, uh, in, in this lecture. Uh, and it's going to be fun. I, I promise it's going to be fun. I'll, I'll try to make it fun. Um, OK, we will use peer instruction, and we will di discuss two topics related to OpenFlow. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen peer instructions, it's going to be something uh, new uh, to you um, and more interactive. Simple, uh, 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 don't, don't, don't worry about it. Uh, okay, and uh, then we will uh, apply peer instruction uh, and we will discuss a couple of topics related to open flow. Um, in particular, uh, what can be used for, what can we do with OpenFlow switches, um, uh, as well as uh, how OpenFlow fits into uh, uh, some of the material I talked in, in the first lecture. Um, this is going to be the third milestone of, of the lecture today. Uh, and uh, finally, um, 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 depending how much time uh, we have, we will also discuss one feature of OpenFlow. Uh, in particular, uh, uh, the, the multiple tables of OpenFlow, and we will do an example together to understand uh, what uh, the multiple tables of OpenFlow are, are useful for. Uh, 
uh, uh, towards the end of the lecture. Until that point, as I will tell you also later, assume that we have a single table in an open flow switch. Okay. Uh, any questions? Nothing? Everything sounds good? Uh, it might sound uh, stupid, but I, how would we... What, what is SDN with one word? What would we say that SDN is? It's not stupid, it's a very good question. Uh, SDN... I haven't figured out what it is. Fantastic. Thanks for, for asking this. Yeah, I cannot answer with one word, but I will try to answer with one sentence. Um, still, it's, it's challenging. Uh, so, the question is, what is SDN? Uh, and uh, the answer uh, is that uh, SDN is uh, a new approach to computer networks that, or a new architecture maybe, a new architecture for computer networks that makes them easier to program and is based on a centralized controller. I will ask this question in the exams. <laughs> in, one, in one word. <laughs> why, why is truly about uh, open flow only? I think there are other, other type of controls and things. It's the most uh, well known, and it's the, I mean, uh, it's the most uh, also um, established, let's say, um, at, at, at this time of year. I mean, there is lots of. Uh, there, too, it's true, it's, uh, there are also other protocols. So, would we say it's uh, a centralized network? Um, since we have a, a controller which controls everything? Yes. We have a centralized network. The control plane is centralized. I think that's the most fundamental difference of uh, uh, STN. We have a centralized controller and we have an open interface. Okay, The word open is very important because in the past, as I said, uh, the... This, there was no open interface between the control plane and the data plane. But I don't want to divert too much. We will come back to these topics in the lecture. Okay. So people keep coming. Keep coming. Okay, let's start with a brief video just to to remind you a little bit, what is SDN actually? And this is also, uh, it fits perfect with you, your question. Uh, it's basically, uh, it describes a little bit SDN from the point of view of an industry player, of HP uh, in particular. Um, and we will see how, according to an industry player, uh, SDN is useful for computer networks. Okay. If you don't understand me, something, don't hesitate to ask me to repeat it. I, I, I under, understand that it's, you don't have a, every day, and also I don't give every day lectures in English, so that's fine. Hi. I'm a network admin, and I'd like to ask you a question. How much time should it take to provision network services for a new application? Unlike other parts of IT, making any changes to the network is still a manual process. When an application is rolled out, I have to manually reconfigure each device on the network via command line interface. At the same time, today's new set of applications and manual configuration Not only does manual configuration add hours and sometimes days to my task, but I can't make dynamic changes on the network to accommodate the new application requirements. And that constrains the full potential that these new applications bring to the business. If that sounds complex, it's because it is. 
My network now is like a complicated map of cities or something. With limited visibility to implement universal changes that is meant from user to application. But there's a new solution for all these problems. SDN, Software Defined Network. SDN takes a complicated network, separates the control plane from the data plane, and now you've got a network that is simple and agile with the visibility to that responses. You can bring in programmability to dynamically change how your network responds to business needs. And with HP Virtual Application Networks, you've got a complete SDN solution in all layers, including infrastructure with OpenFlow devices, controller, and applications. Now I can simply roll out my new application, and the network is ready to reap the application's full potential. In a nutshell, HP's SDN solution gives me the simplicity, agility, and automation I need to keep the business moving forward. And that's something everyone wants. Okay, so this was uh, Adam uh, and Adam's point of view uh, of um, why SDN is useful um, um, and uh, in this video you also saw one of the key, just to give you a reminder, uh, one of the key elements of uh, software defined networking that is instead of having a complex control plane um, where basically um, Okay, so let's say that we have uh, various switches in a network. So traditionally, a switch runs a data plane and a control plane. Okay. The data plane forwards the packets, and the control plane uh, is responsible for the for, for the coordination uh, between the switches. Uh, or the routers and uh, uh, for computing uh, the forwarding claims uh, of, the, of, this, uh, uh, of these entities. Okay, now from this, uh, uh, from this picture that we have uh, uh, here, uh, one of the key things to remember is that we have a uh, complex control protocols. We have protocols that in a distributed fashion they try to coordinate, exchange messages uh, and compute uh, the best paths uh, in, in the network. That's the most basic function, routing. Um, and, and this happens in a distributed manner and this is uh, uh, complex. So from here we go to this picture, where again we have uh, uh, switches. Okay, um, but this time the switches, uh, we can assume that they um, simply have a, a, like a, they, they, they are seeing many hardware, they simply do fast uh, uh, forwarding. Um, and the control part of the switch is, is very simple. We don't have the distributed control protocols anymore, but we have a centralized controller. That has a global view of the network. And on this global view, it can compute best paths. It can apply the policies we want. Uh, it can do traffic engineering, it can do load balancing, uh, and so on. It can control centrally the behavior of the network. So we understand this, right? We understand this. That's the uh, main change in the architecture.
Now, um, and uh, I'll take uh, um, this to um, to discuss uh, one uh, very important component uh, of this architecture. Um, that is uh, the open the open flow protocol. Uh, the open flow protocol uh, is uh, the protocol, and for simplicity, I will erase all, basically everything that thing that sits beneath. Something. Yes. <clears throat> On the right, uh, the left picture. You say, uh, can you say again uh, what is the part of the controller and the data plane? Do you know what? What do you mean? Uh, on the left picture, you said that uh, each one has a controller and a data plane. Can you right. say again what? The part of each one. You said that the data, uh, the data plane distributes the packet, if I remember right. It forwards the packet. Forwards the packet yes. and the control. The control, uh, uh, basically, if you remember, uh, basically, a switch or a router, um, or let's say a router to be more accurate, uh, uh, has a uh, um, a data plane, yes. a control plane, um, a forwarding table. Um, the data plane, you can think of it as a Ferrari. It's, yes. it's, it's engineered to do very fast forwarding. Okay, and that's hardware, primarily. Okay, yes. so its job is to do very fast forwarding. Okay, and it's intelligent hardware, all the complexity is on the hardware. Okay, the control plane runs on software, primarily. It runs uh, many different, especially for routers, uh, it, it runs uh, and it, it supports many different routing protocols um, that um, like uh, BGP, OSPF, and so on, that uh, basically coordinate with other routers in the internet and they uh, compute the forwarding table. They add entries in the forwarding table that is used to, to do the, the forwarding. Okay. You can think this as the brain. Okay, uh, this part uh, exchanges information, uh, coordinates with many other routers uh, in, a net, in, in, in the internet um, and its job is to compute the best paths and to apply policies, like security policies, load balancing policies, uh, and whatever uh, we want to have in the behavior of a network. Okay, thank you. Hope I explained it right. So, open flow now. If we separate these two and we move them to two different systems, here we have a server, okay, uh, and here we have a switch. So these are in two different physical systems. Basically, a protocol. That uh, is used for the controller to speak to the switch. I wouldn't say the word bridge because in networking we use bridge for also other stuff. So it has a special meaning. It's a protocol. It's, it's, it's the communication between them. Oh, why is the English? 
mostly beneficial to large systems. So anything is used today in home networks also, in enterprise networks, in uh, data centers. It started, it had most success in data centers. And uh, if, I, if, I, if this is what you mean, uh, it is useful to large systems, to, to like data centers. Uh, it can be, but it's not so beneficial for a home system. No, it, it has also applications in, in, in home systems. Home networks, enterprise networks. Not enterprise, home networks. Like it's home, home networks. Yes, it has, it has applications. It has applications, but it has some main benefits over the class. The let's, class let's discuss this. I mean, this is a, like a thing of lesson 7, 8. Uh, we will um, uh, go specifically into specific applications and we will see how it is used. Um, are these protocols uh, uh, protocols are control? How you mean? You describe the controller and you said that Part of the control plane. Which part of the control plane is in the control? Okay. Uh, very good question. Uh, good question. Uh, so basically. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the question is uh, um, so what if I, if I say that wrong, correct me. Uh, are these protocols we have here in a traditional router also on the controller? Um, and uh, the answer, I cannot answer with a yes or no uh, specifically. Um, the, the short answer is that no, they are not in the way we know them. They are in a new way. In the controller, that's the short answer. And uh, no, 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 just wait a minute. Uh, so, for example, like a, a very classical example uh, is uh, OSPF. OSPF is a really, really complex pro protocol. I mean, if you see the RFC, I think it has more than 200 pages uh, that describe how you will implement OSPF. Uh, I think an implementation uh, in a commercial router uh, would likely be um, hundreds, uh, tens of thousands of tens of thousands of lines of code. Lines of code. I know also BGP. BGP because I have seen an implementation is uh, more than forty thousand lines of code to implement BGP. Uh, forty to eighty thousand is a good number. So. Um, uh, also, OSPF is also very complex, um, and this is what is an implementation here. Uh, a famous example is that uh, to motivate SDN is that you could implement OSPF or something equivalent to OSPF in three, four hundred lines of code. Okay, so here, let's say that you have three hundred lines of code. Here, you would have forty thousand lines of code. Okay, I make up the numbers to give you an idea. Controller talks or commutes only with uh, switch. True. No router. True. Or switch or routers. Yes, because in the lecture and the, in the exercise lecture, we are talking uh, only for switch. True. True. So, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, the question is, uh, the controller talks to a switch or to a router? And the answer is that um, in this course, we will treat uh, equivalently a switch and a router. It will be the same thing. And you will learn today why. Uh, you will see further on. Yes. Um, 
Until now, we had a, a switch uh, which uh, had the software predefined, already defined. Uh, am I wrong? Right. Um, now the thing is that we take off this part from the switch and we can control it in uh, many ways. Yes, and we can write software. It's open. You cannot code. You cannot program a switch there. You cannot write your own code and write and send it in a traditional and put it to run in a traditional switch. Here you can program this. It's open. Do you see the difference? Yes, I think yes. I think that that's a good point to illustrate the difference. You cannot program a traditional switch or a router. I mean, it sounds primitive, but it, it, this is how it was. <laughs> it has been for many, for decades. Yes. Adam's problem, I understood that he's not tired of uh, exchanging hello packets, he's tired of configuring things. Right. What I understand is that the main function of the controller is the protocols. Because, uh, uh, for example, SPF uh, needs to have a quick uh, response to failure. So, that would be a problem to centralize this service. Mm -hmm. What I understand is that Adam's problem is step-by-step -step configuration, logging into every device and, and trying to do that. That's what I understood from this video. True. This is also, this is also a problem, the configuration. Um, this is also a problem. This is how they market it. But, uh, it's yes, true. because, because, true. because the, these workers are highly paid. That's the motivation between these. The router you pay it and then you don't give us up. True. Um, um, okay, let's go to the next question. Stop on that. That's the end of place, Adam. A <laughs> <laughs> um, very fantastic question. Well, I, see. I so think uh, <laughs> SDN, something that, you know, uh, people are discussing a lot is changing the community, it's changing the job of a network operator. Uh, and uh, traditionally a network operator is a person that has skills on troubleshooting and on uh, you know, low level uh, device configuration uh, like uh, what Adam was saying um, and, and so on. So uh, what ha is being discussed um, uh, with the emergence of SDN is that the job of a network operator ha might and is likely changing uh, with new, this new approach because now it be he becomes a software guy, you know, someone who is uh, running a network and being a traditional network operator is not a software guy, the guy who, right, who is very skilled in coding. He's, a person who is very skilled in troubleshooting, usually, and who understands many different protocols. He knows, you know, 50 different protocols. He knows, understands the details of them. So this is uh, is changing the industry. Why he is so excited? <laughs> um, it's a learn to go. <laughs> yes, but this is makes things, uh, his job easier. Uh, you know, so is it that he will go be. home? What? So is it that he will go home yeah. <laughs> forever? <laughs> because the software is outsourced and uh, free software, etc. So uh, maybe not. Uh, he might uh, adapt to the changes. I mean, technology is something that changes uh, anyway very fast. Uh, is SDN that powerful to change the things we know uh, till now? For example, let's say. Uh, everyone in the world has a router in, in its uh, home, in his home. Um, could every router have its con control plane separated from the data plane? So uh, every action that took place in the router... I'll tell you one thing. I don't know if it's going to change all the world, all, all, the, uh, you know, all, all the routers in the world. But it's going to be hard. But uh, something that I read uh, recently, I was surprised. Uh, Microsoft in its data center, it runs now Linux 
Microsoft runs Linux in its data center to use OpenFlow. Uh, so that uh, uh, to to be able to um, <laughs> I'm not on the servers, so some central nodes for me on the servers. I, not on the servers, on the central nodes for the outlet. On, on the network. Yes. You also uh, you also provide the certification in uh, Microsoft Azure. That is Linux based. You have to learn Linux in order to pass the certification of Microsoft. Okay, so let's say uh, no more questions for a little bit. Okay, so basically, OpenFlow is also called, and remember this term, is also called the southbound. It's also called the southbound, the Notia in Greek, uh, because uh, in the SDN architecture, you also have another, so this is called the southbound API. So this is, the southbound API is the API between the controller and the switches. The northbound API is the API here between the controller and what sits on top the the different applications that control the behavior of the network no box is here okay Okay, um, so let's start. One, uh, it runs over TCP or TLS. Is this clear? Uh, uh, second, uh, we have a, a table here that's called the flow table, um, which we use, uh, we add entries there that are used to forward the uh, packets. And three, uh, the OpenFlow protocol is uh, standardized by the Open Networking Foundation. Uh, it also stands for ONF. So this is the body that standard, uh, standardizes uh, Open Networking Foundation. Do you remember who, who standardizes TCP, IP, and other protocols we have learned? Thank you. Bravo. I, IPF. IPF. Uh, so basically, uh, a different body 
uh, was uh, chosen and was established to standardize the uh, open flow. Um, I don't really know why. Uh, I think part of the reason was that uh, sometimes it can take significant time to, uh, to standardize something in ITF uh, because it requires multiple parties to agree uh, and, and so on. So the developers on OpenFlow, they established a new body that's called ONF uh, and its, dob its job is to promote and uh, uh, standardize uh, 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 OpenFlow. Okay, so now let's do an example. So we have a, a controller. A switch. four hosts connected to the switch. Assume that here we also have a server. Uh, by hosts, uh, what uh, do you mean exactly? Uh, devices. Not that we separate the switch to... No, it's the devices. Right. And... Uh, on this host, we run a server. Let's say that we run a web server. Okay, uh, and assume that here we want to do uh, an HTTP GET. What is the, the first message that we'll, we will send? Louder, louder. What will be the first message? True, true. Uh, so if we forget about the R, let's forget about the R. Request the port. What will be the first packet? What? We use TCP, right? And? Okay. So as soon as the first packet arrives to the controller, now in um, uh, SDN networks, um, um, if the flow table is empty, then we send a message to the, from the switch to the controller. Okay, this message it's called packet in. The message can include the packet entirely, so we can send the SYN packet entirely to the controller, or uh, 
buffers. The switch will buffer the packet um, and will send a, a, a reference to the buffer. Let's say the reference is 250. Okay. This message is very important. You will see, it, like in more, you'll, you'll become very good friends with this message uh, because uh, you see it in all the assignments. It's, it's one of the very most typical uh, open flow messages. So the controller takes the message, the, the packet in, and then he can do two things. Um, one thing is it will send a packet out message. Uh, may I ask something? Uh, yes. Um, doesn't, don't we have to establish a TCP connection in order to send that packet in? Yes. Uh, is it already established? Or that uh, first thing we send and, okay, we have a TCP connection now. With that packet in. Then we have to do a three-way handshake or something like that. Yes. Um, let's assume here that it's already established, mm -hmm. this connection. Okay. Yes. You said that the... Uh, if the flow table of the switch is empty, then we send the packet into the controller. Right. If it's not empty. Okay. Uh, to be more accurate, the packet in goes to the controller if we have a table miss. Uh, when we have a table miss, the usual action for an open flow switch is to send the packet to the controller. Okay. Let's, let's put this here. It's like a cash. Packet miss. This means uh, that uh, we don't have an entry in the table that matches this packet. We could have some entries, but they don't match this packet. This one source, source or this one this. I'll, ca I'll come to this in, in a little bit, okay? I'll come to this in a little bit. Uh, we'll discuss a lot about this. Let's say it's based, let's say in this example, based on destination, IP address. Okay. So, then we have the packet out. The packet out will again have the packet entirely or the buffer ID. So it has to reference the buffer ID otherwise. And then it will give you an action. The action could be forward to port 3 or to port 4 in this case. Okay, this is the one uh, case. Uh, this note that a packet out doesn't install anything in the forwarding table or in, in the flow table of the switch. Alternatively, It can send another message that is called flow mode. The flow mode, it uh, installs an entry in the flow table. Mm -hmm. 
Now, it will first give the match criteria for this entry. So the match criteria could be if the destination is, let's say, 444, if we had a, an IP address here, if the destination is 444, let's say, forward, uh, th this would be the match criteria. If the destination IP address is 444, this is just an example. So we have the match criteria, then we have the action. So the action is, let's say, forward to port 4. So then we have two timeout values. So the idle timeout and the hard timeout. Who can uh, guess what is the idle timeout? Basically just the if the time of inactivity if there is no match, if no packet matches this rule for 20 seconds, then the rule will expire and it will be removed from the flow table. So if we have inactivity. If we don't have inactivity, then the hard timeout will, will come in, uh, which says that after, let's say, 60 seconds, uh, the rule expires and is removed from the flow table. So every entry has a lifetime that is determined by the timeout. Okay. So we have a field that is called the priority, and this is used uh, when we have uh, 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 multiple rules that match a packet, then the highest priority rule wins. And here, just to go, we could optionally also have the buffer ID, uh, which basically says that uh, uh, when you install this rule, apply this to the packet that you have buffered. This is an optional argument. Okay. Um, timeout, action, match, priority. Anything that I missed that you can imagine that there is in a packet out? Maybe some checksum. No. Sorry. May I ask something? Yes, I haven't missed anything. Yes. So the thing is that uh, when uh, we have to take an answer from the... to receive an answer from the controller, that will be either the packet out, um, which could be either the whole packet or the reference, or we could uh, receive a flow mode. Uh, am I saying this right? Mm. Um, why do we need the flow mode if we have a reference in the packet out? Um, I mean, why not uh, place our results immediately in the flow table um, with just uh, a, the packet out from the controller? Uh, why not have an entry to that table? Uh, don't we have uh, everything we need? In this packet, same it's from the just controller? extra functionality. The flow mode uh, message uh, has uh, the purpose of installing an entry. In the flow table of In the, the flow switch. table. The packet out is, has the purpose of replying to the packet thing and send where to send the packet, but without installing. It's extra functionality. Uh, guys, sorry, let me finish this to take a break, to finish this example. 
and we can follow up. Uh, okay, so this is the flow mode. So this will re result in a rule that says H1 to H4, let's say port 80. So this it results in a, in a new rule in the forwarding table, have a new entry. Then the SYN packet goes to the destination. Now, and I want to say two more things. To save time, on the way back, when we have the SYNAC, uh, the same process happens again. We have the SYNAC, we have a packet in, sorry, packet in. Let's say that we have a, a flow mode. We have a new entry now, H4, 2, uh, H1, here we had H1 to H4. We have a new entry um, and the packet uh, SYNAC uh, is forwarded further uh, uh, after all these messages are changed, is forwarded to further to host 1. Okay, from that point on all the future packets, all the future packets will not go, will not involve the controller. All the future packets now will be handled between these two, will be handled by these rules. Okay. So this is important to remember. Uh, and to understand, if you don't understand, ask now to repeat it. Yes, the last thing you said, can you repeat it, please? Yes. Um, so after the SYN and the SYNAC, the further packets of the TCP connection will be forwarded by the rules that are installed in the flow table. But if we send the packet out, there, there is nothing in the flow table. Yes, yes. Um, Let's say we have a flow yes. mode, for example. Yes, but now I'm not talking about the scene. I'm talking about the, the data packets. So we have, you know, pin, synac, okay. synac, uh, arc, and then data, 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 data. Okay, so this packet will require a, a packet in and packet out. Okay. This also for the opposite direction. Okay. But all the futures, uh, future will, will, will not have a packet in, a packet out, or flow mode. So it will because just have... we don't have a, a, a miss. Okay, since we have a rule here, for these packets, we don't have a table miss anymore. So it knows exactly the port uh, and the host to communicate yes. with. This information, uh, where, where is it stored? In the table, in the flow table. Remember the flow mode that I was saying, action, forward, okay. forward. This information is stored in the flow table. After the ACK, the SYNAC sent by the... H4, for example. When the, the flow mode is sent by the controller to the switch, it is stored in the, in the flow. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yes. Okay. How do we decide if we will take a packet out or a flow, flow mode? Uh, yes, uh, that's a question because I understand what uh, what. Uh, every of these options does, but I can understand how we will decide if the packet is only one packet and then we want to see again something from that, 
so I will not need it in the flow table. Or if there, there will be a sequence of packets, we will need a flow table entry. Yeah, that's a good question, and I don't have a, a good answer to this. My answer is that usually you use flow modes. Okay. Usually you will use flow modes and you will have entries. Now, in at least in what we will learn in this class, uh, if some developer wants to build some smart application, I could imagine scenarios that, uh, you know, because you have limited number of entries, Yes. You don't want to put entry for yes. every system. Okay, maybe for that you, you use a packet out. But if you send, uh, let's say, 100 packets and you don't want to use a flow table, you have to ask the controller 100 times. That's expensive, I believe. But yes, yes, yes. yes. So you, say you don't do this. Uh, you will do it for special packets. Okay. Typically, you, flow, you use flow mode. Okay. okay. And, you, and you add a rule. Okay, let me say one more thing. Uh, what we saw in this example, it's called reactive. Okay, it's a reactive open flow because we reactively add <coughs> rules in the flow table. Uh, an alternative approach could be that we proactively add rules in the flow table. So if we if we do that, then we don't need to have the packet things and packet outs at all. Because we don't have table misses. Okay. I mean the controller when it boots it goes and it could go and install these rules and then we have the proactive. But if any packet arrives that don't know how to handle, it can ask the controller. If it arrives in the switch, it can always ask the controller how to... If handle. we have a table miss. Yes. If we have a table miss. Yes. yes. Okay. So, for example, when we want um, to send a dummy packet, uh, we would use the... Um, how do you say that? Packet in, packet out. Uh, method and when we want to send data, we will use the flow mode uh, in order to create uh, the rules we want inside the table. And uh, there is no need; it's time to go back to the controller and find the yes, information yes, we need. Yes. We will use almost always flow modes mm -hmm. in our assignments. In some special cases, you might the controller might want to send a, a packet out. Uh, but uh, it's, I mean, too uh, advanced to discuss it now. Yeah. Proactive rule uh, expires when... Uh, yes, uh, all, okay. all the rules expire. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Actually, the first rules that we make, which one to which four, in the port entry, it's going to be useless. Because uh, when a server responds, he actually opens a new, uh, new port and sends the message with a source port, uh, not 18, something else, something new. So the first rule is going to be useless. All the data will came in another port. Yes. Uh, the first rule, if I understand your uh, the rule that is created here, yes. will be used for the for this. Uh, Can be. If because he he, he keeps the port 18 in, in H4. And packets will come with another uh, port. So in the same TCP connection, so they will come with uh, port 80. Now port 80, I uh, hope you're not... Uh, it's the, the socket port, uh, not the switch port. You can actually open a new socket. Yes, yes, but the... The packets will still go to, to port 80. In this TCP, we will discuss it. Yes. Um, we have four hosts connected to the switch. Uh, let's say I'm host 2 and I have access to that flow table. Um, why not go to that flow table and um, let's say, sniff packets uh, 
you don't have a host do not have access to the flow table uh, but I, what do you want to say maybe it's I maybe thought all every host has access to the um, to the flow table um, since we can control it since we can uh, we can program it Not the cost, the controller can program it, not the cost. Who uses the controller? The administrator. The administrator. Kaika. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll figure it out later. Okay, so let's let's have a break now. And, uh, okay, so welcome back to the classroom. Uh, we're have about uh, I think less than 40 minutes. So we don't know if you have half an hour. So let's say use this half an hour to follow up on the basic concepts regarding open flow and how it works. Um, and I would like to start with two things I already mentioned in the previous hour. Um, that is uh, uh, the actions and the maths. Besides forwarding a packet uh, to a port, port to, to a single port. What other actions can you think that we could have in an open flow switch? Drop. Let's find five, six actions. Drop. That's inside the switch. Flood. Fantastic. Multicast. Uh, or in other words, forward to multiple ports. How can we do marking? What? In traditional, uh, in traditional networks, I know how. How, how, can we, how do we do in traditional? Okay, change uh, header. That's right, hello. Change. A header. How else uh, could we do marking besides changing a bit? Fantastic. Insert. Pop. Push. Packet headers. Okay. Anything else? Thing one left. The most basic. Second most basic. <laughs> Receive. No. Save. No. 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 Basically, a send to controller. So it's basically a variation of forward you send to the controller. Very well, very well. And then we can have uh, here when we match. Uh, we can practically match on any pa packet header field. Okay, here we can have IPs, MAC, ports, TCP ports, 
E, let me say layer 4 ports. Here the list can be very long because we can practically match on any header field. Okay, let's do now an exercise. Uh, Alex, could you give the handouts? And now we'll explain you in the meanwhile what is um, peer instruction. Uh, peer instruction is the process that I'll give you a question and you in teams uh, of two or three students uh, discuss the question. So now we'll have a break and we will discuss the question and give you. Uh, and, and basically the break is going to be just for three, four minutes maximum. Uh, and in this uh, time, uh, try to come to a consensus, but discuss. I mean, uh, peer instru instructions means that the instructor is the student. That basically by discussing uh, and actively expressing your thoughts, uh, you get more involved. Uh, and so come to a consensus on what you think in each team is the correct answer. Okay, and then we will discuss this all together. So now the question is using this maths, what we have learned here, using this maths and these actions, basically, what functions we can implement in an open flow sheet? Or we cannot uh, from the given. from this address or some packets in this port, just drop it, means firewall. I would say firewall is okay, I think we can implement a lot of answer is yes. SNL, probably yes. Because we can add and change headers. Yes, only the flow term. So about with cache, though. For example, if H4 is a server and H1 is a client, and then. I mean, with cache, uh, cache is it like. Um, but in the switch, I mean in the switch, in the open flow, we can have much in the action, right? When <laughs> you say we have cache, it's something more than that, right? Some, some more information. Oh, it's more, it's more general. Yes. My name is Mario. Again? Again. T-E-L-D -E I will write it. Don't just pronounce it. Toelde. 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 Yes. Okay. Where are from Cyprus? So you speak Greek? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Then we 
stay for sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, we we say. Um, do not try. Big cancer. Yeah. Yeah, if, if this is can, then this is okay. <laughs> but if this cannot. Uh, Correct. It's the webcast that uh, um, we cannot do it uh, with um, a switch. And why? Why is that? Because for webcasting, we need the uh, we need memory to store the pages. And uh, it's only uh, for uh, for what for what day for day. In this situation. We cannot store a web page in this way. I think for web casting we need to differentiate web packets. Uh, for that we need to inspect packet and we can do space doesn't have that So this is correct. So if we you want to see application um, so um, so with uh, normal flow switch, we cannot look at application level content, la la layer 5. Um, so how would we, yes. So. I would ask how would we implement the firewall and the MPLS? Okay. Um, okay, so let's say who wants to answer for the firewall? Yes, you can drop buckets. Right? So what could be for a, a firewall role? Firewall role. Yes. Uh, so our port uh, packets to port, uh, let's say, port 22 to SSH, drop uh, uh, packets to, to port 22. Okay. How would we implement a NAT? Sign IPs for the local networks in the host, and then inside the switch we will populate the flow table with its IP. Yes, um, correct. So, what rules would we need to to add? So the IP is after this prefix. For the local IPs. So let's say x dot x dot x dot y. Mm -hmm. All the YIPs are the local network type. Local network IPs. The other <coughs> are mm -hmm. outside the network. So for a NAT, basically we need the uh, two rules. Uh, one in each direction of the NAT. Uh, if we go have uh, outgoing traffic, we need a rule that in this case is changes uh, a header field. Okay, we need to to change which header field. The IP, 
there be only food number and the port number. And on the reverse direction, it maps back um, the, the given uh, address and port to the original address and port. Great. Okay, and now let's do one more. Uh, Alexandre, can you help me with one more? Uh, the load balancer would, uh, in, would be implemented with drops as well? No. Okay, that's a... Um, uh, there is a special open flow command um, that allows you to give two ports and it load balances between the, the ports. How about the MPLS? The MPLS, you would need to add a, a label. So this would use the push and pop commands to, to add a label. And then you would match on this label to, to do forwarding. What? Um, <laughs> it's basically the problem that we cannot change the, the basic protocols of the internet. The IP, the BGP and so on. That we are stuck with what we invented 40 years ago. I don't think it has any capability, but it's open. Then do it. It's too general. The question is too general. Ossification? What does it mean? Ossification is, um, let me see. It is used uh, to refer to to that uh, we are practically using uh, IPv4 and uh, IPv6, which were designed uh, 40 years ago, 30 years ago. So this is uh, a simplified uh, way to describe it. It means that it's hard to change the fundamental protocols of the internet, IPv4, and so on.
Okay, who says A? B? B? Okay, we have all the spectrum here. <laughs> okay, so basically the answer was um, 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 shooting for here is B. Um, okay. <laughs> So one of the features of open flow, and maybe this is a little bit hard to, to understand, is that now we can look at an IPv4 address uh, at the bits that are sitting in this uh, uh, field of the packet, uh, but uh, we can take custom actions. We can say that this is not a, an IPv4 address, this is uh, a new protocol and these are some bits that we interpret the way we like them. And we have some rules, and we do some network uh, actions based on how we like them. Uh, this is uh, one uh, uh, reason that OpenFlow helps with this problem of uh, uh, internet innovation, which was one of the reasons it was designed for. But also the third point is also, uh, answer C, is also correct to some extent, uh, because uh, the controller is, all, is extensible, and this helps also to implement um, uh, uh, some functionality in the controller. Questions? Play in uh, simplified. It is, that's true. It is. <laughs> true. This is uh, so the, the question is. Uh, um, or basically the observation is, and this is correct, and uh, uh, OpenFlow uh, has also the goals to simplify the hardware. And uh, we, will all, we will talk about more about this in the next lecture, that is about switches, um, and, and that's uh, one of the features of OpenFlow. I think that's the end of that. Okay, I don't really know. Uh, I cannot give you uh, an answer. <laughs> it's just um, true. It's not. Uh, it's something simple. Yeah. It's, it's something very simple. It just happened. It was the right timing, maybe also in the industry, that they. Um, and picked up these ideas. These ideas have been also proposed in the past. I think the people that started OpenFlow, they were very, very good at marketing, but they built to the industry. So I think this helped. <coughs> Other efforts that uh, I know trying to automate configuration. We have done projects like that in the past, trying to automate the configuration of wireless devices. So if you don't see the problem trying to automate configuration in various vendors, go into abstraction. First try a few things and then why some generalization might be needed. Okay.
So we, we have a few minutes left. So, and let me say two last things in, in, in this uh, time that is left. Uh, first of all, um, uh, as uh, I describe it here, um, I, uh, a switch has, um, so far I was saying that it has a flow table. Uh, in, the, in, uh, in reality, it doesn't have one flow table, it has multiple flow tables. Uh, and uh, in particular, there is a pipeline of flow tables. So when a packet comes, uh, it first goes to, to table zero. Okay, table zero has some actions. Um, one action could be drop the packet. Um, uh, if the packet is uh, dropped, uh, it is dropped. Its lifetime ends there. Uh, another function, function could be forward the packet. So um, if we have a, a match here, and we forward the packet, uh, that's okay. Uh, sometimes we might want to do some more complex actions in a packet. Um, so, for example, we could have uh, uh, a table here that uh, implements access control that says if we have, you know, George coming, we don't like George dropping. Okay. Uh, or that. Uh, People from a specific subnet are not allowed to to talk to to the data center of, of an enterprise. Um, so here we could have some such rules. It's an example of what we could have in the first table. Um, it's like firewall. Yeah. So it could be. Uh, yes. This is called also access control. Um, uh, in particular. Now, um, uh, the, the table could also forward a packet to another table. It could tell you, uh, go to table 1, or go to table 10. It could also skip a table. Um, <clears throat> a, a rule that matches uh, could forward uh, the packet. So now, in table one, we could have some rules that implement some NAT functionality. You know, change IP address or can port number from this to something else. And lastly, we could have a table that uh, um, does the routing and the switching of the packets. Why we have multiple tables?
Because we have uh, distinct actions and we want every table uh, probably to do uh, that uh, specific action. We don't want to have something that is interconnected. We want to get out of this uh, thing. Yeah. In other words, uh, it helps uh, organize better the, the functions we want to apply. Yes, maybe for uh, abstraction. Like, to reduce the latency. These are, we would say, it's content addressable uh, memories, and they are very fast. Yes. So, but this is the, the uh, like one reason is just for better organization of the different functions we want to have, and uh, there is also another reason. It's harder to understand to, to find. The second reason has to do with the hardware, um, uh, and we will see also in the next lecture that in reality in hardware we have multiple tables. Uh, hardware tables, different memories. This uh, lookups can be done in one. What? This lookups can be done in one. In, uh, they could be done, but it's easier to organize them. It's for management purposes. This would make uh, the table like a single table. Uh, you can check. But uh, you have to okay. it. It doesn't come. <coughs> because uh, you have to rewrite the packet. So you will delay. It doesn't help with the speed. Okay, yes. Okay, so let's keep from here that it's good for management. And it's also good for. Uh, because the hardware has multiple tables, so it's. It exposes better the, ha the hardware. Programming will also be easy. Okay. Programming, programming part will also be easy. Because we have more tables according to functionality. I think it wouldn't be. It makes it harder. Yeah. Well, but... Uh, I don't know. Maybe I was too fast to say that. If you have to program something complex, um, you want all these functions, it might be easier to separate them in multiple tables than to have them as one big table. Because uh, you also need to see sometimes the combinations. We will talk about this at uh, lecture 5, um, where you have composition of functions. Let me correct myself again. Yeah. Doesn't help with the latency of a single packet, but it increases throughput, uh, like classical pipeline does. Classical pipelining does not reduce the time, uh, uh, but uh, it increases the throughput of commands. So, uh, if the pipeline is full, you can have three outstanding uh, packets. One being rewritten, another one in the second stage, and another one. Great. Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting point. Okay, we will discuss more about this and the hardware in the next lecture. Um, you can find also slides online uh, related to this lecture. There is also some more material in the slides. You can use this for reading. Okay, thank you. On Thursday, we have the first assignment comes out.